When someone comes to know Jesus Christ's saving grace, a new life arises, replacing the old one, and this new believer immediately experiences joy and hope that were not present before. But here's the thing, if you don't surround yourself with people who encourage you in your spiritual journey, the Bible states in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, do not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. A believer who has been walking with God for a while may become discouraged and lose hope when they encounter others in their lives who do not live up to the faith they claim to have discovered. If a person's relationship with Christ is not based on who he is and what he has done, that person is more likely to be influenced by what other Christians do and say. As members of the body of Christ, it is our responsibility to maintain our confidence in God and His Word. It is our responsibility to defend ourselves and our beliefs by assessing our relationships. Are they beneficial or harmful? Are they encouraging you to move forward or are they driving you backward? Now, I want to focus on the three sorts of toxic people to avoid in our daily walk with Christ. The discourager is the first person you should avoid. We've all met this individual who has something nasty to say about every circumstance. They are constantly focusing at the negative side of things rather than the positive. Consider this scenario. A brand new believer is enthusiastic about attending church and participating in what God is doing. She attends all of the church's events. If the doors are open, she is present. She sits down next to someone she recognizes as a Christian and is eager to get to know her. However, this person instantly begins complaining about how lengthy sermons normally last and how the church lacks compelling ministries. The new believer walks away startled, unable to comprehend why others do not experience the same joy and optimism that she has. She tries a few more times to give this person a chance, thinking that perhaps she was simply having a bad day, but each time she goes away feeling heavy with negativity. Her new acquaintance usually finds something wrong with everything at church. Keep this in mind. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. The way others communicate and approach life can have a significant impact on us. Rather than focusing on those who discourage you, seek out those who stimulate and spur you on, as Hebrews 10 verse 24 states, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. The second person to avoid is what I like to refer to as the distractor. These are the folks who keep you from pursuing your calling and doing the Lord's work. People who focus on themselves rather than God's will. Their priorities are centered on self rather than service. If you spend a lot of time with these types of individuals, you will lose sight of the calling that God has placed in you. For example, a Christian who desires a closer walk with the Lord spends time concentrating on God's Word, praying in their prayer closet, and surrounding oneself with godly others. When you do this, people will always make comments like, He's always at church, or That church is his life. Instead of encouraging you to keep going, they try to persuade you to go out or do something that is less focused on the Lord and more on your fleshly desires. While we should maintain ties with unbelievers so that we might be a light in a dark world, our closest friends should be those who share our passion for God's plan and calling. Take a look at the believers in Acts 2. They were so committed to the Lord that they met every day. In verse 42, it is said, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. They desired to get together and pursue Christ. At the end of the chapter, we see that God was increasing their numbers on a daily basis in terms of persons saved. The third type of person to avoid is the person who destroys. They may not seek physical harm, but they will take away your peace, joy, and even faith. These are arguably the most critical persons to avoid since they can disguise themselves as lambs, as stated in Matthew 7 verse 15, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. These people are even familiar with scripture. Remember, when the devil tempted Jesus in Matthew 4, he always utilized scripture. 
So, while these people may know the word and appear to be Christians, when you listen to them carefully, you will discover that they are far from God. Our adversary, the devil, desires to undermine the serenity and joy that God has given us, and he can even use others to do so. Consider the following scenario. A woman joins her church's ministry to reach out to the lost community. Those around her disagree with the ministry and want to persuade others in the church, including this woman, that it is unnecessary. They speak well and have a reputation for having made significant investments in the church, and they are most likely long-term members. Even if they say they are Christians, their hearts say otherwise. These people seek to ruin whatever that provides others comfort and joy. So, you and I should pray for discernment so that we can recognize these types of people. Pray for their deliverance, but keep them at a distance so they have no effect on us. It is critical to your relationship with Christ that you are surrounded by people who support you, participate in the Lord's work, and build up the body of Christ rather than tear it down. Whether you are a new believer or have been a believer for many years, the enemy will use anyone to divert your attention away from the Lord. So be cautious and protect your heart from these types of people. Pray and beg God to bring individuals into your life who will help you grow in your faith. Learn how to let go. Holding on to something that God says has come to an end is difficult, and the process of holding on will harm you. And if it does not injure you, it will sow seeds of bitterness, wrath, and unforgiveness. That is what will start to pile up in your heart. That's how Satan wants you to react. How could they do this to me after everything I've done for them? How could they treat me like that? You see, thinking like that will make you disheartened. You put yourself through unnecessary pain when you should simply let them go respectfully, gently, and gracefully. Let them go. Do not waste time fighting or arguing about it. God brought them, and he will bring someone else. And when you find yourself in a situation when you need the grace to accept that someone has fulfilled their mission, pray that the Lord will comfort you as he leads you into the next chapter. We don't always know what's best for ourselves. When our emotions interfere, we may struggle to view reality clearly. That is why we must pray for the grace to be of a sound mind. We will meet a lot of people in our lives. Without a doubt, there will be many who we will learn to love, some that we will be sad to say goodbye to, and some that we will not. But we must trust that God understands what he is doing. He understands what will assist us and what will hurt us. And he understands everything in the broad scheme of eternity, from the beginning to the end of our lives. What is required to grow our character, who is required to lead us to the next level, and who should be removed so that we can continue to advance. We don't always have control over the people in our lives. We can't always beg them to stay or force them to go. But we can manage our mindset. According to the Bible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Living peacefully entails letting go of wrath, malice, regret, and what could have been while looking forward to what comes next. God has so many relationships planned for you that you may not be aware of yet. Don't lose out on the chances he has planned for you because you're too intent on maintaining something that will never last. Don't try to bury your emotions. Instead, bring them to God in prayer. He understands your hurt and pain. Jesus was betrayed by those he loved, so he knows your reluctance. He will, however, provide you with the strength to complete the difficult tasks at hand. Pray for wisdom as well. It can be difficult to know when to stay and when to let go. But at some point, it becomes evident that it is not meant to be. If a relationship no longer glorifies God, but instead glorifies itself, it is time to move on and look ahead. So, if God has eliminated someone from your life, do not be scared to let go.